is Corey Day the next Kyle Larson? Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. So this past weekend, I was at the Brickyard 400. I'm standing on the grid pre-race around the Kyle Larson car. And to do my best Brian Windhorse impression, something caught my eye, something very interesting, something that only people that follow dirt racing would potentially even recognize. I was standing there and I see this kid standing next to Rick Hendrick, talking to Jeff Gordon, talking to Rick Hendrick, Chad Knauss. And I'm like, I know that kid from somewhere. That was Corey Day currently driving the number 14 car on the High Limit Sprint Car Tour. He has five High Limit wins this year, one World of Outlaws win. He also drove four junior motorsports in the late model stock car at Hickory earlier this year, finished seventh in his first feature and won his second feature leading all 40 laps. Now, why does this matter? Why did this catch my attention? Well, it was interesting because Corey Day was standing there in a Team Chevy Polo and a HendrickCars.com hat talking to Rick Hendrick. I don't know if you guys know this, if you've ever run, been on the grid pre-race before. Rick Hendrick is not the easiest person to get up and talk to, especially for like a common fan. So that caught my attention. So why was Corey Day with Hendrick Motorsports at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Well, we come to find out that it's because he will be running the number 28 Pinnacle Motorsport Group car at Salem Speedway this weekend in the ARCA Series on Saturday night, driving the HendrickCars.com car. They'll also be sponsoring him in Br at Bristol, as well as Kansas, and the three ARCA races he will be running this year. It is interesting because it appears that Corey Day is very much following the same path that Kyle Larson took from dirt racing to NASCAR, but Corey Day starting it when he's 18 years old and at a different tier than what Kyle Larson did. So if you remember when Kyle Larson came into NASCAR, he wanted to make that transition from dirt to becoming a NASCAR driver. Every team was like, hey, you got to bring money. We can't have you if you don't bring money. He's like, we don't have money to bring. But Chip Ganassi, recognizing talent, said, hey, we'll figure this out. Let's go ahead and sign you. You don't have to bring any money. They put him at Turner Scott for a year in the Xfinity car. Everybody remembers the 32 guard go flying into the fence at Daytona, rips the engine out. It's sitting right there in the front row of the stands. You remember he did that. And then he moved up to the Cup Series with Chip Ganassi Racing in that number 42 car. He ran some truck stuff as well and not a full season, but select truck races just to get more experience under his belt. Corey Day now appears to be following the same path that Kyle Larson did. And that's why I did the wind horse thing, because it is interesting, right? And Corey Day was able to be at that five car with zero recognition. I didn't take a picture of him because I was standing too close and it would have been an awkward <laughs> type of moment to pull my phone out and take a photo of him in that moment. But the person that was with me also said, hey, that's Corey Day that is standing right there. So for Corey Day, the 18 year old from Clovis, California, if you're not familiar with who he is, go ahead and buy stock now because I believe his value is about to absolutely skyrocket like it was Apple stock if you bought it back in the 80s. So for Corey Day, this is a massive, massive step in his career. Just last summer, he came out from California to start racing sprint cars in the Midwest because everybody knows if you want to become good at sprint car racing, you got to come to the Midwest and race in Indiana, Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, and just get your feet wet there. West Coast sprint car racing is fine, but it's not the same beast that the Midwest is. And Corey Day came out and guess what? The guy has absolutely continued to win at a pretty good click. He just finished second uh, in the high limit race at Lernerville on Tuesday night. He continues to be and a really impressive driver behind the wheel, but it does not appear that he has a massive amount of budget behind him. He's not a guy that brings a big sponsor along. He doesn't have family money by the sounds of it, at least not to the extent of some people that are in NASCAR at this point. So for Corey Day, he needs to work the relationships that he has. And Kyle Larson said that he thinks that Corey Day is the next version of him. And now, you know, Proceed with caution, right? Because we've heard people say this before. Casey Atwood was supposed to be the next Jeff Gordon. Heck, Casey Kane was probably supposed to be the next Jeff Gordon as well. If you listen to certain people out there, Stephen Wall thought he was going to be the next Dale Jr. And now is Corey Day going to be the next Kyle Larson? Well, when it comes to just straight up raw driving talent, Corey Day has that in absolute boatloads. He is super talented behind the wheel of a race car for only being 18 years old. He has seemingly been able to adapt and figure it out on the fly, which has been massively impressive. I mean, heck, he's only ever raced two pavement races in his entire life. They were on the same night at Hickory driving that JRM late model stock. He finished seventh in the first feature and then led every lap in the second feature and wins that. Now, granted, let me go ahead and put a disclaimer out here. I talk a lot about how really good equipment can mask driver deficiencies. We see it happen all the time in the Arca series, sometimes in the trucks as well, and it could absolutely happen here. So, you know, maybe we don't read into it too much, but it's still impressive that the kid had never been on pavement before, finishes seventh, and then wins his other race. Granted, 
he was in probably the best equipment that was at the track that night. But, you know, still sample size is small. It looks good on paper. Now we'll get to find out what he can do on Saturday night at Salem Speedway on the famed High Banks, a track that he's never been to and a car that he's never been in before. Can he win? Can he finish second? It's the same car that Connor Zillis just took to victory lane last Friday night at the Indianapolis Raceway Park, uh, where the Xfinity Series should still be racing, regardless of how much of a banger that race was at the Brickyard. It would still be cool to see Xfinity back at IRP. I digress, though. So for Corey Day... This is, again, a massive step in the right direction for him. And Hendrick Motorsports maybe doesn't have the best driver development pipeline, you know, history. They, of course, signed Blake Feast, Boston Reed, Landon Castle, who probably didn't get a fair enough shake out of it. I think if Landon Castle actually got, you know, the fair driver development pipeline that, say, Kyle Busch or Brian Vickers did, I think he would have probably had a really successful career. Still got the championship rings for helping out Jimmy Johnson and doing all the testing for the 48 car back in the day. But... Yeah, Hendrick Motorsports in terms of driver development pipeline, uh, it's kind of hit or miss, but they haven't really had a driver development guy in quite some time. Of course, they did have Chase Elliott. You can argue that, you know, that was um, one of the guys they developed, but he came to Junior Motorsports and to a lesser extent, he ran some ARCA stuff as well as some truck with Hendrick support as well, but I don't necessarily claim him or would argue that I would argue that he's not one of the development guys, but fringe. Yes. William Byron came to JRM after doing all of his development with with TRD. And that's how he ended up there. Alex Bowman just did his development in just really crappy cars. And thankfully, somebody noticed that he is actually really talented. We should probably put him into a race car. And Hendrick Motorsports identified that and put him in to a race car. But for the most part, the Hendrick development pipeline isn't what some other teams have or had in the past. Now, though, if they sign Corey Day, they're signing him just strictly based on talent by the sound of it. Obviously, if HendrickCars.com is going to sponsor him, that means that they're putting a lot of you know, weight and value into what Corey Day can bring to them. And obviously, they don't have an open seat in the Cup Series for the next couple of years, more than likely. But for Corey Day, he's only 18. They can start this transition to pavement racing and have him ready in a pretty short amount of time. If, you know, of course, he adapts to pavement racing the same way that he is adapted to dirt racing. And if he's anything like Kyle Larson, he'll absolutely have it figured out and he'll be running the wall at Homestead in his first lap out. And heck, he's going to Kansas in the Arca Series. We're going to see how much he wants to run the wall. Same at Salem, I guess, as well. And to a lesser extent, probably at Bristol, <laughs> we're going to see just how much he wants to ride the wall like all the other dirt guys do. So I think this is a massive step for Corey Day. I think it's cool that Hendrick Motorsports is doing this. I like the fact that they're going out and identifying guys based on driver talent, not based on how much money they can also bring to the team. They know that they can find sponsors if they absolutely have to, including, you know, HendrickCars.com sponsoring them if they absolutely need that to happen. So let me know in the comments what you think about Corey Day and his potential transition from, you know, dirt racing to asphalt racing. It is a bummer to lose one of the best up and coming dirt racers. Absolutely. If he does decide to make this full time transition to to pavement racing. But from a career standpoint, I can completely understand him wanting to chase this dream and potentially just doing what Kyle Larson does is running sprint cars on a part time basis as well as racing full time and cup. Um, I can see, you know, why he would want to do that. So let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.